Well, I think the biggest thing that we should expect to see in the next 10 years is the growth of Wikipedia in the languages of the developing world. Uh, that's really our strongest area of growth, and it's our, really our strongest focus uh, for the future. Um, a few years ago, I could say that English accounted for only one third of the content in Wikipedia, but today it's less than 20%, and that's going to continue to decline, uh, even as English uh, continues to grow, uh, but all the other languages of the world are growing faster, uh, and there's a lot of excitement, uh, particularly in India. We're opening an office in India later this year, uh, and the Indian language versions of Wikipedia are growing very quickly, and that's very exciting. When we look at the internet and we think about how people are sharing information, uh, there are several things that I think we should look at. So first of all, uh, bandwidth continues to increase and people's access to broadband uh, continues to increase and uh, people who have access to broadband, it just gets faster. And that's going to enable people to begin sharing in a much more comfortable way uh, things like video that now, you know, there's a video is sort of um, where text was 10 years ago in the sense that, yes, you can upload video, but it's slow, it's hard, it takes a long time. Once it becomes as easy to send a, a five minute video in, in three seconds as it takes today to send an email in three seconds, we're gonna see a lot of interesting things come up around that. And then the other thing I think nobody has really recognized yet the incredible social and cultural impact of what's going to happen as the next billion people come online and the next billion after that. Because so far, who's online? Uh, who's online is uh, Europe, the US, Japan, uh, e even when we look at China, it's the wealthy elites in China. It's um, the developed world, essentially. And we already talked to each other. We already knew about each other. What's happening next is that the next billion people who come online are coming online from different cultures. They're going to be interacting on a one-to-one -one basis in the way that we do on the internet. I think it's going to have huge cultural impact. So for Wikipedia, when, when people ask the question about should students cite Wikipedia, we always say, no, not really. It's not really our primary concern. Uh, my view is that if you're uh, at the university level in particular, uh, you shouldn't be citing Encyclopedia Britannica. I mean, honestly, you're in university, it's an encyclopedia. That's not what an encyclopedia is for. In the research process, an encyclopedia is to get you oriented, to give you broad background knowledge, to fill in sort of side holes that you may need that will help you have a richer understanding of what you're working on. But really, at the university level, you should be going directly to primary sources. So you might start with Wikipedia uh, and then go from there and, and read the sources and uh, actually help contribute to Wikipedia if you see something we've gotten wrong. In terms of Wikipedia and the peer review process in scientific journals, we have no aspirations to move into that area at all, really. Uh, what an encyclopedia does is condense knowledge and explain it uh, to, uh, to everyone. So anyone who has a you know, college level of education ought to find Wikipedia approachable. And you know, we're not the place for original research. The peer review process has its problems, but it also has its great benefits. Um, we're not going to replace that. Well, I think there's a lot of different effects that having free knowledge for everyone could bring to the world. Uh, obviously, if we think about living in a wealthy Western society and how it's changed our lives, um, you know, we just expect to have at our fingertips a basic explanation of whatever it is we want to know about. So if you hear on uh, the radio something horrible has happened in Armenia, and you think to yourself, oh, gee, Armenia, I sort of kind of know a little bit about where that is, you can go look it up, and you really do go look it up. Whereas 40, 50 years ago, you might have thought, oh, I should look that up, but nobody ever did. You know, it was not that easy. When we look at the developing world, um, you know, I've been to uh, a slum in Dominican Republic. And I went to this area, Alta Gracia, where just three years prior, they didn't have electricity. And they're living in tin roof shacks. And uh, I visited a computer lab there that the First Lady has built in the slum, where the kids are, they come after school and they, they get on the computers. And what do they do? They're, they're on Google, they're on YouTube, they're on Wikipedia, they're sending IMs to their friends, they're listening to music. They're doing all the things that kids do online. And 
the whole world has opened up to them. And so now uh, they're going to be much more capable politically. They're going to have the ability to have a voice. They're going to have an understanding of, of what's going on. And they're going to ask the question, why am I living in a slum? How did this happen? What's going on? Uh, what is the corruption that's causing this kind of thing? And multiply that times, you know, 100,000 uh, people, communities all around the world actually having access to the knowledge they need to begin to take the steps forward to change their lives. I think it can be astounding. So getting people access to Wikipedia if they don't have access to the internet is tricky and expensive. Um, when I think about it, I think one of the most important factors is the rapid growth of mobile internet. Uh, and I'm really excited about the possibilities of some of the new technologies uh, like the tablet computing. So when I look at my iPad and I, and I say, well, this is really cool and I can actually contribute using an iPad, although it's not as easy as a, as a full computer, I think this could be an amazing thing in the developing world. Now, Apple obviously isn't going to be a leader in bringing computing to the developing world. It's not their thing. They're more the, the Mercedes, BMW. But they do show us the way forward in many cases. And now we're having a whole slew of companies come out with competing tablet computers that are going to be cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And suddenly we're going to have devices for $100 that people can actually purchase and use um, with very limited resources. Otherwise, they're going to have access. So I think access via mobile internet devices is going to come faster than we had thought. Still, that's still not everybody. Uh, so there's the possibility of print. One of the things about Wikipedia that's interesting is that it's freely licensed. So everything in Wikipedia, you're free to take it, download a full copy of Wikipedia, and distribute it. Um, and some people have been doing that. Uh, you, can, you can take Wikipedia and install it on a school computer in a rural village that doesn't have internet, but they do have a, a small computer, and people have access that way. So there's a lot of interesting things that can happen because we let them happen. We're, we're not trying to control the distribution. If you can think of a way to get Wikipedia to the poorest people in the world, by all means, do it. Uh, we're, nobody's going to stand in your way, and I'm, I'm excited about that. Well, it's interesting. Um, you know, we're still very much in the early days of the internet. And so, even though Wikipedia is now 10 years old, it's still quite young. Uh, I hope that people look back at Wikipedia 100 or 500 years from now and they say, wow, in the early days of the internet, that was something really good. That was something important. That showed a new way people could come together with goodwill, good faith, um, and work together in a charitable way as volunteers to build something really amazing. Um, and this in an era when large swaths of the internet are you know, about commercialism and uh, buying and selling things, which I'm, I'm no opposition to whatsoever. Sometimes people think I'm some kind of communist, not true. But I think it's also wonderful that we can say, look, actually you can come together just in a spirit of cooperation to build something. It's not about buying or selling anything. It's just about learning and, and sharing knowledge together. <laughs> um, well, I never edited it. Um, I did years ago, but the media found that all too interesting. Uh, uh, I, I don't look at it that often. I mean, every, every now and then someone will ask me a question. They'll say, well, what about this? How should we say this? And I'll say, and they never listen to me anyway. But uh, yeah, once every six months.